And now we return you to our regularly scheduled Flame Flash. Hi there. I'm Flame Flash of FlameFlash.net. This is the FlameFlash.net podcast, episode 52. Only a day late. Kind of happens when the cable modem dies. Some kind of an exhaustive feedback loop or something. I wasn't here when it was replaced, so didn't get the full explanation of why it was killed off. But we're back. We're online. Full speed ahead internet-wise. And it's getting hot in here because I turned off all the fans, so let's get started with the Raptor Report. There are three games on the Raptor Report this week. Magic the Gathering. This is the physical card game again. Evelyn Restored. I'm probably butchering the name of this expansion, but it just came out, this expansion. And Soulbind is going to kick butt. Take a green deck, your standard green buff big creature aggro deck. Mix in Soulbind, and you're going to wallop people. Absolutely Hulk smash them. Yes, it's an Avengers reference. We will get to the Avengers, but we will get to it spoiler free. Last weekend was the opening, after all. I will be kind. Now, something I did notice was a ramp up Hulk smash green red deck, which is what I faced, is pretty well easily controlled. So, against a control deck, you've got things well in hand and they can't really do much about you since they'll not have anything to bind to efficiently with everything oblivion ringed exiled or pacified can't attack or block so everybody gets stuck dead in the water and then you just march over with your little creatures and kill them now a spirit deck on the other hand Spirits are generally small flyers. They depend on being able to poke your opponent to death. But when you suddenly need them for defense against those big guns that just suddenly appear out of nowhere thanks to Soulbind, it gets messy by quite a bit. Haven't faced a new uh, token deck yet with either of those two decks, so that's in the cards as it were. We'll get to them. Hopefully I'll, event I'll be picking up a AR, since I'll butcher the real name, Fat Pack pretty soon. Nine boosters, extra mana, mana mana. That little friendly booklet, box, some deck boxes. I'm not going to go full tilt after all with a huge 36 card, or 36 booster box, just because one, too expensive. Two, I have some really good decks right now. I'm happy with where my decks are, but a little augmentation of this new Soulbind mechanic, the new Flicker mechanic, temporarily exile and then they come right back. Awesome. I'd like to see those in action on some of my decks. Awesome Knots. Hey! It's a new game! We're reviewing a new game! I'm so excited. I clocked six hours in this turkey. Now, granted, yesterday was some, and we might be slightly off since we are recording on a different day of the week than usual, but six hours on this one. In comparison, World of Warcraft only scored 11 hours. That's the next one on the Raptor Report, though. Awesome Knots is this new take, this new genre, to me at least. So we have the evolution of the tower defense game, taking that one extra step further. So we are in a battle arena, massively online battle arena, a MOBA. You play on a team of three, red versus blue, each trying to get to the other's base and blow it up. Fairly straightforward, as you go through the level, you earn Solar, the credits, and upgrade yourself. Health, 
more health, health rejuvenation, you upgrade your weapons, there are unique characters, so there is a play style choice involved here. There are achievements and trophies to beating your opponents with each of the six characters, but I really like the monkey. The monkey with the laser. So I think I'll be sticking with him. Baby boy, he likes Clunk, that big robot. Definitely a big robot tank. He and older son likes the cowboy that summons a spectral bull that just goes charging forward through everybody. Pretty cool. This is a game that you should be getting the trial of if you're on Xbox as your primary system, or you should be going and subscribing to PlayStation Plus as I've ranted and raved in positive views before, and get it for free. Think about it. PlayStation Plus, your membership, $50. Awesome Nuts, $10. So right there, if you like this game, PlayStation Plus just paid for itself $10 worth for a year. Very awesome. Not? Nah? Hmm? You know? So give it a shot. Go download this one. Try it out. I was impressed. I was greatly pleased. On the PlayStation Network, there's not a lot of talking going on either. So it's just going and playing. I haven't experienced it on the Xbox, so I'm sure there's probably a lot of uh, trash talking and trolling. But if you have a PS3, get it there. It's a very straightforward strategy. You don't need communication. In fact, on the PS3, the... Uh, D-pad, the direction pad, can send signals to your teammates. So right here, hey everybody, why don't you come over here and attack? Or, hey, we need some defense over here, help! You can call out strategies through your controller. You don't need to be talking to anybody. Awesome nuts. Go try it out. World of Warcraft. The last game on the Raptor Report this week, it's World of Warcraft. There's not much more I can say about it. Children's Week ended. Dark Moon Fair began. Dark Moon Fair. Now, I'm going to transition straight into the news from the Raptor Report because there's a lot of stuff going on right now regarding the beta, the Mists of Pandaria beta. If you're not following the FlameFlash.net sister site, monkofmists.wordpress.com you're missing out hit flameflash.net there'll be a link on the right and there's monk of mists this whole wordpress platform thing fantastic so first off monk of mists oh excuse me miss of pandaria collector's edition will likely have a mount and a pet the Achievement for both has been data mined out, so we're not totally sure what it's going to be. I believe we mentioned on a previous podcast that it could very possibly be some kind of mount that turns you into a dragon that can then be mounted by somebody else, and it's a two-person that job there. But we also have account bound mounts. Now, right now in the beta... This means that your druid can ride your paladin's charger. It means your death knight can ride your warlock's dread steed. These are likely and hopefully not going to go live. There are current limitations, for instance, on the magic carpets. Only tailors can ride them. But you can see said magic carpets on your druid. So hopefully, or on my druid, my mage is the tailor. So, hopefully, like the engineering mounts and the tailoring mounts, class mounts are also going to be limited. So, nobody else can ride that ebon winged steed, the skeletal griffin. I probably didn't pronounce the name of it right. It Monk of Myths, I linked it there. But, hopefully, 
it's going to be worked out so some things are still class specific. It's a little off-putting the idea of a druid or a monk riding a fell steed. I'm not sure why. But the thing is, account bound mounts. Remember that motorcycle that was all the rage in Wrath? You only got one because it was 16,000 gold. Well, now you have it on everybody. Traveler's Tundra Mount, you have it on everybody. If you haven't picked some of these things up because you weren't quite sure which one was going to be your main, now's the time to do it. Go pick these mounts up on your current quote unquote main, and come mists, it'll be on everybody. Which leads me into account wide achievements. So, if I ding what a long, strange trip it's been, you know, that achievement, the big meta achievement that gives you 310% riding speed for free, and that big, nice purple proto drake. In the beta right now, if I go and mount that purple drake on my mage, ding, I get the 310% speed achievement. Because there are still pop-ups, even though your achievement point total doesn't increase. And score. I'm suddenly flying at 310% on a character who did not earn what a long, strange trip it's been. Now I kind of regret doing it on two characters. But, oh well. Account-wide achievements. I've written up a lot about it on Monk of Mists. Both that and the mounts, so we'll leave it at that for now. We've got a lot of things to cover. For instance, druids are regaining disentanglement. It's going to be a passive skill across the board. Before, this was going to be one of the level 90 talents, but it's a pretty lame level 90 talent. And I guess druids haven't been doing so hot ever since losing that ability. So they're just going to get all, get it back. Everybody gets it back. Whether you're Restro, Boomkin, or Guardian or Feral. You can now shapeshift to break roots again in mists. Thank goodness. WoW is holding steady at 10.2 million subscribers. We have about mm, 2 million, give or take with the annual pass locking them in. So that means 8 million people, give or take, are playing the game without locking themselves in for a year. Personally, that's 8 million people that just missed out on a really good deal. The deal ended April 30th. But hopefully next BlizzCon, won't be this year, but probably the next year, they announce another one of these programs once everybody has fallen off of the program so probably after April 30th of next year and we get something else another good big commitment I don't mind getting Diablo 3 for free that's pretty cool an amount Pandaren dances are out there as well now. Hit Monk of Mists. They're dancing away. I uh, also linked the YouTube uh, links of the inspiration videos, or the supposed inspiration, so you can compare. The female Pandaren, well, I'm glad that I don't choose a race based on the dance. That's all I have to say there. They're, they look amazing. Don't get me wrong, but they also don't really make much sense. I really wish they would have at least drawn inspiration from a dance that was easily recognizable within the American culture. But I also respect the fact that they're going overseas and picking up a anime, an anime meme. Oh well. 
final World of Warcraft specific news, hey, I'm staying organized for once, would be the fact that they're going to give you, us what changed pop-ups. Uh, going from Vanilla to Burning Crusade, not a big transition. Burning Crusade to Wrath, also not a big transition. Wrath to Cataclysm, that was a pretty big transition. Not as huge as it's going to be from Cataclysm to Mists, but still big enough that there was quite a bit of break freezing. I know Red Flare, my wife, stopped playing her Druid as much, just because there was that many dramatic changes to her class. And had she had some kind of primer like this, and not been forced to figure it all out on her own, she might have stuck with it. She might have stuck with her Druid. As it stands, she's having a blast on her Priest in PvP. It really helps having Sun now at 85. Good partner. A good little partner right there. But that would be the World of Warcraft news. As I said, Monk of Mists. Hit flameflash.net. The link's right over there on the right, or it's monkofmists.wordpress.com. Considering if traffic picks up to buy a buy it its own URL, but we're a ways away from that. Other gaming news. Elder Scrolls Online has been announced. That's about all I know. Elder Scrolls is the series that brought us Oblivion, Morrowind, or Morrowind Oblivion, I think it is, Skyrim. Cool. It's not a RPG series that I've sunk my teeth into. Probably should get around to doing so, but haven't had the time. Heck, I logged Hey, cool. I logged 20 hours of gaming over this last week. That's not too shabby. But I have a full-time job, full-time kids, full-time wife. Gaming is secondary. So I think I will go ahead and let those who love Elder Scrolls continue to enjoy it. And I will sadly continue to miss out. Well... I'm going to go all over the map now, folks. My notes are not overly organized, so we'll get started. There's a white PlayStation Vita that has been announced in Japan, both uh, Wi-Fi and 3G models. I think they're taking one of those plays out of Nintendo's handbook and you know, saying, hey, we've got a new shiny color, and I don't think it's going to do very well still. 3DS is out so selling the PlayStation Vita massively worldwide. Go Nintendo, yeah! But I still feel sorry for these guys. This is their second platform to attempt on. I don't even know of any good games that I'm interested in playing. From what I hear, it's not even viable to play original PlayStation games that you get on the PlayStation Network Store. But I can do that on my PlayStation, on my PSP. So why should I upgrade right now, Sony? Why? There's nothing out there that I'm interested in, except for the uh, 3G, Twitter, and Skype. But I can get that on a phone. It is really tempting to get one of those things, give it to Red Flare, so that she has a independent network to reach out on if needed but not for the amount of money that they're asking for it yet just not though if they turn around and do something like uh, Xbox is doing a $99 Xbox with a two year agreement comes with Connect and a 4 gigabyte model uh, you know what, though? If you bought it brand new right now, it's about three ninety nine. If you go this route, you're paying 458 You're getting screwed. 
if you go this route. Now the two-year agreement is that you agree to say subscribe to Xbox Live for two years. That's probably doable for most gamers. Hadn't been for me, but I believe I am now uh, gold again, family account at this point. So, but it's just a bad deal. Save up and buy it on your own. And go find Xbox Live gold cards for cheaper. It's not always $60 a year out there. So, by locking yourself in a two year agreement, you're also locking yourself into paying full price for something that you could potentially find for sale somewhere else. Bad deal. They need to sweeten the pot somehow. PlayStation Plus is rumored, heavy rumor, to be considering offering full game day one downloads. So if you are a member of PlayStation Plus, you can download the hot new title for free, quote unquote. It's a subscription service. That's a real subscription service. You get something that, if you don't pay for it, you have to buy separately. Xbox Live? Paying yearly for online play? I can get online play from my Wii? From my PlayStation 3? For free. It's included in buying the system. Same for the 3DS. I still have a big beef with Microsoft charging people to play online. It should be part of the system. Then give us all the other cool features as part of a service package. Online chat? Fine. Voice communication with friends? Sharing video feeds? Sharing Zoom Marketplace things? Fine. But don't lock multiplayer behind a subscription. That's all I'm saying. Unless, of course, you're an MMO, and then there are other outlying costs of why they do it that way. We're going to hop to politics, just because it's the next one on the list, and we've talked about gaming pretty heavily for a moment. There are strong words from Russia with love. No, not really love. They're not overly happy with the idea of a missile defense. And are even threatening preemptive attack. Preemptive. Uh, threatening. Personally, I think this is all... Show. No democratic nation has ever gone to war with another democratic nation. It just hasn't happened. Well, what about the uh, U.S. Revolution? No. That was kind of a democracy versus a monarchy. The people will not stand for going to war with another democratic nation. It just, it hasn't happened yet. I do say yet. It's always a possibility. But I just don't see this as being anything more than muscle flexing. Thor and Captain America, the movies, are currently top DVD sellers post the Avengers movie. I guess everybody's going and down, uh, grabbing that on Amazon.com to see the prequels of the Avengers, which is fantastic. Go see it. There are two Easter egg scenes at the end so hang out until the very very end it was really neat being conspiratorial with the sun because we knew something they didn't know we watched as people left and we certainly benefited from staying the very last scene not as impressive as the scene kind of in the middle of the credits, but that's all I'm going to say. That is all I'm going to say. 
the Avengers midnight release grossed 18.7 million. The weekend, uh, over 200 million. We're talking top spots here, people. Go Avengers. Assemble. Samuel L. Jackson went a little Nick Fury on a uh, reviewer. I guess somebody wasn't overly impressed with the 8th biggest midnight re opening overall. Some hot shot movie reviewer. No idea who they were. But over Twitter there was a nice back and forth, I guess, because that particular reviewer wasn't overly fond of Samuel L. Jackson's portrayal of Nick Fury. Everybody has a right to their opinion. Even if I think that the reviewer is a moron. Now, it's my opinion. No, he's not a moron. He's just doing his job. He's trying to be objectively critical. Use the right term there. Objectively? Subjectively? Yeah, objectively. But I disagree. I'll have to respectfully disagree. I didn't even bother reading his stuff, so... We'll leave it at that. John McAfee. Does that name sound familiar? McAfee? Oh, that's right. Virus security software. Cool. Well, this fellow was the founder of that particular software suite, and his home in Belize was raided illegally by police. Not sure of the full details on that, but maybe he should have stayed in the United States. Just saying. Supposedly, at least what he is contending is he didn't donate to some random political party or person and so they sent the police in to kind of shake him down and scare him and he's now fighting back a little bit. Not there, not sure what happened, but I kind of found it funny that the man who founded McAfee Security software himself got invaded by and was therefore very insecure irony I approve Avengers 2 we're going to hop back to the Avengers for a moment Af is confirmed by the way after Iron Man 3 Thor 2 and Captain America 2 all movies I'm now looking forward to Every last one of them. Very much looking forward to it. Josh Whedon has thanked everybody publicly on his website. I have now, unfortunately, forgotten the URL for that website, but go Google Josh Whedon's blog. He publicly thanks everyone for, his, for their support. I know a lot of people probably didn't even know who Josh Whedon was. You know, the Buffy the Vampire Slayer guy, Firefly guy, Angel, Dollhouse, anybody? Dr. Horrible sing-along blog? Anyway, he thanks everyone. Pretty cool. I don't know if most directors do that after some huge, hugely successful movie, but this thing just keeps snowballing as far as positive feedback goes so right now I'm telling everybody go see Avengers I'm already signed up to an Amazon alert when the Avengers blu-ray is available for order probably won't order the blu-ray but hopefully there will be a DVD digital copy value pack why not blu-ray even though even though I have a PS3 because I'd rather watch movies using the DVD player rather than put my PS3 at risk by even more heavy use. I already use that thing a lot, so by pushing it to its limits and also using it for movie playback, it just makes me a little wary since I have one of those launch system uh, PS3s with the full backwards compatibility to the original PlayStation system. Just makes me a little nervous. Oh, speaking of PlayStation 3, Pixel Junk Sale. Now, what? What's a, what's a pixel, pixel Junk? There is a Pixel Junk Eden 
Racers and Monsters. Uh, Monsters is a tower defense game, from my understanding. Eden is some kind of music-based game, and Racers is, well, top-down racers, you know, like little RC cars, or the, that kind of look, at least. You know, the RC cars that are on a track, and you pull a trigger to move fast the little remote control things as a kid. No? Oh well. But a sale. Two bucks gets you all three games. There are also a couple of others out there. Go check it out. It's probably still active. It was on Tuesday. Hopefully it's still going on. Two dollars for three games. Win, win, win. Now, if you're not heavily into PlayStation, because it already has a Cinema Now app. The Xbox 360 just picked that up. I believe that's the Best Buy digital download service. Not positive. I don't use it. So far, I'm only in iTunes, PlayStation Network Store, and Voodoo. And I will probably not venture further into the PlayStation Network Store now that I have the Apple TV. And Voodoo is nice when I get something free through it. Say, the last Spy Kids movie. I believe we got some kind of coupon code to have access to it via Voodoo. So, we have it via Voodoo as well as the hard copy. But, it'll be Apple TV for us, I think. Oddly amusing note. A man legally changed his name in Nebraska to Tyrannosaurus Rex. He said it was because it, it's quote unquote cooler. Hello, Mr. Rex. All I know is I hope you can spell your first name right Tyrannosaurus. Ugh. What are we going to call you for short? Ty? Hey, that actually works. That was me trying to be sarcastic, but it kind of works. All right, Tyrex. Go forth and accomplish whatever it was you were planning to accomplish with that legal name change. I wish you well. Finally, if you go to the battle.net account summary screen, make sure the next time you're, say, adding a game time card to your account or starting to pre-download Diablo 3, which releases in, oh, five days from now. It's May 10th when I'm recording this. While you're there, set your battle tag. It's on the account summary screen over on the left. My left. Your left as you're facing your computer screen. And set it. I'm Flame Flash. Big surprise. Not sure what number of Flame Flash I am. I'll take a peek and maybe have that for next week. When Diablo 3 is live. But I'm Flame Flash. I'll be Flame Flash on the Battle Tag system. I'm Flame Flash over on the PlayStation Network. You can follow me on Fl as Flame Flash on Twitter. There's also a FlameFlash.net community page that you can uh, go and like. You can easily find that by going to flameflash.net which also leads you to this podcast stream, if you're not downloading it from iTunes or watching it on YouTube or you stream live. Usually we're on every Wednesday nights and you're welcome to stop by and participate in the chat. Leave us an iTunes review you have questions, podcast at flameflash.net. Notice that theme here? I'm Flameflash. I'm also Flameflash82 on Xbox Live. Feel free to stop by and say hello when you see me somewhere and fraggable. But thank you for coming by. This has been episode 52, and I am Flameflash, signing off.